Hello everybody, we are doing a series of videos to the lead up to First Fruits. This is called Finish the Line with the Lead Team. So each member of our leadership team will be given a line they need to finish. This should be a fun way to answer some questions you might have about First Fruits and also put the lead team on the spot a little bit. Mm. So I think we're ready for some fun. Oh, and at the end, there's two mystery questions that two people have to answer that they don't know about. Yippee. So we'll see how that goes, okay. And the first question is... Surprise, surprise, it's me! Okay, hey, hey. Really glad okay. you. We hold first fruits at the start of each year because... Um, so I suppose we hold first fruits because it's first. Uh, it's our way in faith of declaring that in everything, finance included, we're putting God first. Yeah. Okay, let's do question number two. Question number two is to oh, me. Oh, yeah? Oh. Yes, yeah. okay. In the Bible, we see the principle of first fruits, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so there's a number of places you find first fruits. It's sprinkled all over the show. Yeah. One of our foundational ones is in Proverbs, where it talks about we bring the, um, the first fruits of our crops. Yeah. Um, and oh, why? Literal crops <laughs> on Jesus first fruit well. Sunday. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, Steve. You're from Yorkshire. Um, <laughs> so, so we interpret that as our wealth because it's the first of our harvest yeah. of the year. That's why we do it so early in the year. So we bring the first and our best. Mm. And it's also seen in Nehemiah too, uh, um, at the end of uh, this book where they've rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. And Nehemiah's like, right, come on, guys. We're all going to bring the first mm. and our mm. best back uh, to the temple and we're all gonna have a massive celebration it paints yeah. this amazing picture of singing and dancing and song yeah. and celebration can we do that on the second of feb the we can do that why not me and steve <laughs> why aren't me and steve <laughs> well. one more to go so mm -hmm. let's look at the okay, come on. Third question all right so third question is oh, oh. Hey. the loss okay okay in a nutshell first fruits is Okay, so first fruits is as it says on the tin. Uh, three things I would say. Uh, first and best. Yeah. We've already spoken about that. I love that. Yeah. The thought of our first and our best to God at the beginning yeah. of the year. What a better time. Uh, another way that I always remember first fruits is expectation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what are we expecting from God this year? Yeah. If, we're, if a farmer expects a harvest, right, yeah. which mm -hmm. they should, if we plant seed, we're expecting yeah. stuff to come back, yeah. That's right. then... What level? So people say to me, how much should we give? Yeah. Well, I, I kind of say to them, well, how big is your expectation? Yeah. Yeah. But what farmer puts yeah. out seed without believing that there's going to be some comebacks? Come on. So, so there's that. And then the third thing really is about protection. Mm -hmm. So when they would bring a, a harvest to God, you know, because of course we're talking in an agricultural setting, uh, they'd, they'd bring harvest and say, God, we want your protection over That's the harvest right. so that the locusts don't yeah. eat it, it doesn't yeah. get eaten up. So in our finances and what we expect for the year, it would be just the same thing. God, we're looking for protection over our lives, over our family, over what you're giving to us so that it doesn't get robbed, all that kind of Come stuff. Come on. Yeah. Very good. So now two mystery questions. Okay. 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 <laughs> so the first... It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. The first mm -hmm. mystery question is... Huh. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, it's not called first vegetables, <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> it's not wow. called first vegetables, That's... because for most of us, yeah. we don't work in agriculture. Wow. <laughs> Unless you want to bring your veg that you brought <laughs> from the farm <laughs> shop or the grocery <laughs> shop this week. <clears throat> You can bring your first and best. That's why it's not called first vegetables. So I think we've answered that in a roundabout way. Yeah, we are. That's very good. Okay. And so the second mystery question is... Oh, here we go. Oh, it's Steve. It's Steve. I am now going to recite the full Bible in the Hebrew language. Oh, <laughs> Tell me you can't do that, okay. Steve. Uh, no, you can't. No, I'm not. Take it. <laughs> good answer. Move on. Stupid question. You could. You could, but you're not going to. I really could. I could do it in Latin for you. Oh, here we go. Right. Not in Hebrew. Greek. <laughs> Thank you, team. If you're watching online, get in contact with us. We'd love to have a conversation with you about it. Uh, but apart from that, it's goodbye from the leadership team. Bye. <laughs>
Hi, we wanted to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about what is happening within our community groups. In a time where we are scattered, we have never been more connected. And so we just wanted to give you a glimpse to what's happening within some of our community groups. So we're going to invite an incredible couple called Emily and Isaac to tell you a little bit about their community groups and how they've responded in this season of lockdown. So uh, welcome onto the screen, Emily and Isaac. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Hi, hi. <laughs> so, guys, I know you're super passionate about community, and that's not just confined to community groups. Um, that is really a value you hold as a family. And I know with your four incredible children that you take the time to reach out to people, to stay connected, and really build strong communities. So we would love to learn from you um, a little bit today. So tell us a little bit about the community groups that you're involved in. Give us a little bit of context. Uh, so me and Isaac are both involved in a community group called After I Do, which is for um, married couples. Yeah. Um, I'm also involved in a, a clay community group, which sadly hasn't been able to run during lockdown. Mm -hmm. And then um, at the moment, I'm very involved with my Girls God Chat group. And we meet on a Thursday and that's um, ladies from all different walks of life, all different ages, all different stages of our faith. Um, mm -hmm. And we meet. Um, either every other Thursday or um, in between as well on WhatsApp, okay, um, especially fine. during lockdown. Yeah. Very good. Isaac, a little bit about your group? Um, yeah, my, my group meets, it used to be alternate with um, Emily's on a Thursday once a fortnight, yeah. but during lockdown, <clears throat> one of the guys, um, John Williams, he just decided, listen guys, we need more support and more connection. So he, he set up Zoom and we meet every single week now. So it's gone from a fortnight to meeting up um, every week. That's fantastic. You know, um, Emily, tell me a little bit about how the ladies have benefited from being a part of your community group in this season of lockdown. Um, well, personally, I've really benefited just from um, being able to obviously connect with people outside yeah. of my home and just share where we're, we're up to. We're all um, in different um, jobs. So some of us are key workers. Some of us are mums, some of us are homeschooling, some of us are uh, managing massive projects and really stressed out. So um, mm -hmm. when I asked the girls how they were benefiting from it, they just said they felt um, really supported, really encouraged by everything and felt they could always um, ask for help with prayer um, just advice on different things and um, being comforted when someone's holiday had been cancelled um, mm -hmm. and just um, and new levels of trust really as well. They can just wow. really share um, more. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because we would assume that, you know, because we're connecting virtually, that it would ha be hard to build sort of deeper relationships and deep and trust. But that's not been the case at all. I mean, I know I've, I've heard some of the stories from, from your group that just stories of breakthrough and healing and people being there for each other. I mean, the fact that, you know, you're all in different contexts, you know, some people, you know, homeschooling and others, you know, out on the front line working as a key worker, but you're still able to, to be there and have compassion and support one another. I just think that's yeah. super powerful. Isaac, tell me a little bit about um, your group and, and the men within the group. Uh, yeah, we're, we're guys from all different kind of backgrounds, different situations, but you know, we just find that there's a, a real good kind of um, friendship there built. Like Emily said, with us going from a fortnight to every week, yeah. um, that's a, that support network there, it's fantastic. And it's an open group as well. It's not just a closed group. It's actually right. open the... The guys got chat. Um, it started on WhatsApp kind of thing. So there's like 30 odd men on that. But wow. on average, there's about 11 guys, 10 guys who meet on the Zoom. But it's always open. It's always right. advertised. So anyone who wants to join can just join. And even if you just want to listen in, but you want to contribute and. It's, it's, um, it's just fantastic. You know, guys, we're just so privileged to be, uh, to have you a part of our community. And, and really, you are such an inspiration to us that how we build strong relationships and stay connected. And we just want to thank you for who you are. Um, guys, if you want to be a part of a community group, just a message that, um, in the chat, one of the hosts will tell you where you can find that information about what community groups are online and how you can get involved. But Emily and Isaac, just one last thought from you. If you were, if somebody was sort of on the fence going, oh, I'm not really sure if it's for me and this kind of thing, what would you say to somebody thinking about joining a community group? Um, just do it. Just uh, if you want to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard, isn't it? Um, just walking the walk and being a Christian just normally in life. So yeah. to be on your own, it's, it's really, really hard to get connected to other people and 
you'd be surrounded by people that can encourage you that you can just have mm. a laugh with um yeah very good I would, so, I would say as well the, the same really but also if, if there's not a community group that you feel as though you 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 feel connected to or drawn to mm -hmm. then set one up yourself i would Come say on. Set one. <laughs> don't wait for someone to kind of like you know create That's something for you set set a community group up yourself and invite people Come on. because we all were made for connection we are so. and we can help you doing that so if you're sitting there thinking oh actually i had an idea for a community group that i would want to start again message in the chat we will support you and help you do that thanks hey guys it is kofi from the past i am 25 and six days old so there you go some verification that this is from the past I'm down here at the edge. We've just wrapped filming the shared Sunday of the 2nd of August and Ben asked me to shoot some footage from behind the scenes to show you guys what the team get up to working hard between Sundays and rehearsals to bring the broadcast to you. So why not take a look now? <laughs> what are you doing today? Broadcasting. What does that mean? Spreading the word of God. I like to move my face my phone a bit so my glasses don't steam up. I'm part of filming the gathering, which is a great privilege. Yeah, it's exciting. Looking forward to serving again. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What's it like being on the stage by yourself? Really That's true. First Sunday on as the sound engineer for the broadcast. How are you feeling about it? I find your lack of faith disturbing. Just slightly more technical than normal, which um, I like. If you ever see some pure banter on Facebook chat, it's James. I, I like your face mask, it's very stylish. Where'd you get it? I am. My brother in law's mum made it. What you know, it's who you know. The people up here control what you see camera shots, lights, graphics, lyrics. Gav is our tech director. He knows anything you could possibly want to know technically. But also, this week, he's our set caller, letting us know what's happening when in the broadcast. That went amazingly well. I'm probably smiling. I want to speak to you this morning on the whole subject of your it, your state, your lot in life. There is a, a fictitious character, Cousin It, uh, a lovable little hairball. Basically, this, this guy is, is a hairball with sunglasses and he doesn't live with the Adams family, but he is the guy that visits the home. And my point is this, the bottom line is that we all have a cousin it. Cousin it comes into our homes. This it, this situation, this, this character comes in and takes all kinds of forms. Sometimes that's a welcome visitor and sometimes a very unwelcome guest also. My question to you this morning is simply this, what's your it. What is the stuff that is going on around you or going on within you? Maybe this current season of lockdown is your particular it. Our it has more influence on our lives than we would probably ever believe. Your it is a teacher. Your it can be a destroyer or a healer. Your it is no respecter of persons. I want to be an encouragement to you. And the word of God for today that I want to bring is simply this. It came to pass. In the Bible, many times this term is used. It came to pass. And, and it's speaking here about things that come and then they go. Good morning. We hope you are well and staying safe. I'm Kofi, part of the team here. Drop in the chat where you're joining us from. We want to know, we want to see your 
different locations. You don't have to be too specific. Don't need postcodes <laughs> or house numbers. Just general areas. Let us know where you're coming from. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. And in fact, you're here for pre-show, which means extra brownie points. You get to witness a great interview with a wonderful, wonderful lady. Drop some love in the chat for Siobhan Taylor. Siobhan, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. We've got Siobhan here to talk about something that's really important to our church community, community. Um, and we're going to talk specifically about community groups. So I've got some questions that some people have sent in. Okay. Um, and I'm going to ask you this. Are you All ready? Right, I am ready. As long as I'm not doing push-ups, I kind of feel like I'll be okay. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Right, so for those who don't know, can you explain what a community group is? Okay, uh, so a community group really is our vehicle that we use for uh, living life on mission. Uh, it's a great opportunity where you can come into relationship with people. Um, and we, our community groups are based on three things. They're based on a common interest, uh, and that can be pretty much anything from walking your dog to knitting, c using clay, uh, sewing, reading the Bible together. And we even have groups who just say they love to hang out and they just love food. And so that's what they do. So whatever there is a common interest that people can gather around. But the two components that run along any community group is discipleship and mission. And so we come into relationship with each other and we encourage each other to grow and be more like Jesus. Um, that's a discipleship element. And the mission bit is we try and do the things that Jesus did. So, um, yeah, that's really in a nutshell what our community groups are. Um, they're a great vehicle for living life um, on mission. Awesome. So why is being part of a community group so important right now? Um, I think it's important all the time, but right now more than ever, we have to be so intentional with our relationships based on the fact that proximity at times can be um, an issue and something that we're restrained around. So community groups really give us an opportunity to, to love, to help grow in love practically um, with God and with each other. Um, it gives us an opportunity to both grow and serve. And so I think um, staying in community will really give you um, yeah, just that connectivity that I think at times we all need now. Um, I know, like, literally not had a great couple of weeks. Um, and I know we all kind of go dipped into these waves of, yeah, we can do this. Like, oh, no, it's yep. too much. We Definitely. were just literally reading Psalms. And, like, Psalms is a little like that where David's like, yes, life is great. And the next is like, oh, no. And I kind of feel like my weeks have been a little bit like that. And being in relationship, we've actually got our community group on meeting online tonight. We're doing like a cheese and wine Zoom just to kind of like, well, eat cheese and wine and just stay connected. Um, but, you know, I've had a Zoom call yesterday with a dear friend. I've had food delivered to our house, you know, um, while my husband's not been that well. And that's the power of community that we get to grow together, um, love God and each other together. We're never more like Jesus than when we're loving each other and serving each other. And so uh, um, I would encourage you, if you don't belong to a community group, honestly, um, it is a great opportunity where you will grow, um, and it's an anchoring point, I think, for us. Really good. We have quite a few community groups, yeah. but if, for example, someone um, doesn't necessarily feel like there's a community group around one of their interests presently, mm -hmm. um, is it possible for them to start one? Definitely. I always say to like people, um, I know Jakob mentioned it last week, what is God saying to you and what are you going to do about it? Um, when it comes to community groups, I kind of say to people, what do you love doing? And um, you would do that like you know, for fun. What do you love doing and who can you invite to do that with you? Um, I think that's a great way of, if there's not something, if you look at, we've actually got something like 54 community groups. I think pretty much about half of them are running online in some form or another. Um, but yeah, I would encourage you to think, what do you love doing and who can you ask to do it with you? That's like a great place to start. Definitely. Um, have have we got any new community groups starting up? Oh, yes, we do. Oh. <laughs> I'm so pleased you asked. We do. So we have uh, Keys to Freedom, which is about to start in a couple of weeks. What's that about? 
So Keys to Freedom is a curriculum um, birthed out of Mercy Ministries. Um, Google them, the great, incredible uh, charity. It's an eight-week curriculum that really helps you to dig down into those roots that may be producing fruit in your life that are unwanted. Um, and so it goes through an eight-week curriculum to the whole um, reason behind the group really is to increase in freedom and produce good fruit in our life. Uh, so when we talk about fruit, we're talking about behaviors and things like that that are beneficial to us. And we all have things like that that we may want to address that aren't so beneficial. Um, and this is, we've just run a group uh, just before Christmas we started. Um, we had an incredible men's group, and I know the men just... Honestly, the feedback we've had um, is that it really has brought freedom yeah. to people's lives. So we have a Keys to Freedom group starting, an Alpha group starting, um, a Cap Job Club group starting, uh, something called Four Points, which is like helping people um, over a four-week period explore um, what Christianity is. So, yeah, we definitely, if you want to get involved, there's opportunity to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to encourage you, check out the groups that we have. You can see some of them on the website. Follow us on social media. You can find out more. Yeah. And if you're just curious and want to find out more, email groups at tcclife.com. That's right. There's so much there. A um, few more questions. Okay. Um, a question to you. How All many right. community groups do you have? So I reckon before we went into lockdown, it was about 54. Uh, so we have um, some groups who like cooking, and they come together and they learn a new cuisine together. Um, we had a dog walking group, Clative, which we really work with clay, which I absolutely love, um, sewing, good yarn, which does anything to do with yarn, knitting, crocheting, all that kind of thing. Um, you name it, seriously. <laughs> There's this a group, a group for, for you. Uh, do you know, we actually have some great um, groups that lo run on WhatsApp. And so we have a devotional group as well where every day you have a prayer and some scripture. And then the group encourage each other on how that can be applied in their life. So honestly, there's pretty much something for everyone. Yeah. Um, in fact, just before the last, the first, the last, the first lockdown, mm -hmm. um, I got the opportunity, even though I don't have a dog, to go with the dog walkers. <laughs> and I can just say, it's so much Did you want to get a dog afterwards? No. Come on, yes you did. For my fiance that's watching, no. Yes, yes you did. He's whispered it to me before. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, love dogs, definitely a dog person. Uh, but too, too much uh, maintenance. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I can tell you it is far beyond just the interest. I had some really great chats with people who sometimes in life you don't get that much of an opportunity to interface yeah. with different from people from different walks of life. And I was talking to my friend Nelson, great guy if you don't know him, and we just got an opportunity to go a bit yeah. deeper about what's going on in our lives. And I think that is something really powerful that community yeah. groups hold, that opportunity of fellowship. And like uh, Siobhan was saying, they have that great missional element where yeah. you can invite a friend wherever they are in their walk of faith, whether they know Jesus or not. Yeah. And they can just get stuck in yeah. and Zoom along with everyone. Honestly, and I, and I think it does provide us an opportunity to become more like Jesus and do the things that Jesus did. So, you know, Jesus served, um, he loved, he... Um, you know, he reached out to his community, and our vehicles that we use for community groups are a great way to do that. So, uh, but you say it, it, it creates an opportunity um, in our life to do the things that actually are important. So, yeah, make space for that. So, the final question okay. I mentioned it a bit, but from you, mm -hmm. if you want to know more about community groups, where should people go? There's a number of ways that people uh, can find out about community groups. As you say, on our website, there will be a list of community groups that we run um, at tcclife.com. Um, otherwise, if you are watching this on your on a social media platform, you can direct message us, and we will um, answer some questions that you may have. Otherwise, you can email us at groups uh, at tcclife.com. So, uh, yeah, a number of ways. Definitely. Let okay. Let's thank Siobhan in the <laughs> chat. She's been put on the spot with a few of those questions. <laughs> I just made them up right here and now. Um, you handle that very well. Thanks, Kirk. Um, Thanks for being no exercise questions. You know, like, I was really worried about how many push-ups I could do. 
well, I'm not going okay, to do thanks. that to you. But Very we all grateful. know it's, it's more than Dave. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, just to wrap up, I wanted to read this story. This story was sent in by a member of one of our men's Bible groups. For this, for me, this has been a real blessing during this lockdown. Since um, last March, it's something that I look forward to each week to have a time of fellowship, connection, laughter, and discipleship. It is a place where we can be real with each other, support each other. We have also a lot of fun-filled nights and laughter. We frequently have nights that challenge us and our walk with God. And overall, we're learning together and discipling one another. I would encourage everyone to get connected to a community group to maintain fellowship with the church. So I encourage you, send in any stories that you might have. Uh, you can direct message us on social media or email stories at TCC Life. Um, we're going to be starting really, really soon. So I'm going to wrap up now. Uh, we've got a great gathering coming up. Rach is on the message, on, so I expect to see a ton of encouraging messages yeah. in the chat. So maybe grab a brew, grab a biscuit, and let's get ready to start.
so glad that you joined us this morning. We believe that the Spirit of God is with you wherever you are. And that means you've got a spirit of hope with you. We believe that Jesus is our living hope. And there's always a reason to give him praise because he is always good. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to sing a song of praise and thanks to God for delivering us through so many trials and circumstances and always being that hope for us. So why don't you join us as we sing?
how such powerful truths in those lyrics. I want to welcome you to this broadcast. I am so excited that you're here, whether it's your first time, whether you've been here a million times. I don't know whether that's possible, but it'd be impressive. Uh, I'm Kofi. Big welcome to you. We've got an awesome broadcast coming up. We've got a video for Kids Church. We've got Rach on the message and some other great songs coming up. So make sure that you keep your attention fully on this broadcast. I wanted to encourage you guys. Um, I don't know where you find yourself this morning, but earlier this week, I found myself feeling a bit down in the dumps, if I'm honest with you. And um, I challenged myself to go for a run. Now, a lot of you don't know me, so I'll tell you, I formally retired from running in 2016. I decided I was too old, my joints wouldn't hold up, and so I switched tacks. But as I came into this lockdown, I found, for whatever reason, maybe because gyms are closed and I couldn't do some of the other physical activities that I'd usually do, I was finding this lockdown a bit challenging, so I decided to go for a run. It was a terrible run. <laughs> I didn't go very far. I had to stop and walk so often. Um, but I felt so much better on the back of it. And a thought occurred to me after it that I probably should have stretched. I forgot that. It's not the cool part of going for a run to reinvigorate yourself. Um, and so my muscles hurt the following few days. I don't regret the run. But you're probably like, Kofi, what are you on about? This is a church broadcast. Why are you talking about running? It just reminded me that for some of us, this Sunday is kind of like going for a run. It's to reinvigorate ourselves. It's to reconnect, just get to something that will help us as we live out the rest of our lives. Because everything else in my life was going pretty great, to be honest. But the run just helped bring a bit of balance. And so I don't know where you find yourself in terms of health, but in terms of spiritual health, your Sunday might be like going for a run. But what I wanted to encourage you is, sometimes you've got to do a bit of a stretch, and you might have to do something that's a bit different from what you'd usually do. It might not seem like the coolest thing. Maybe you're going to, have to take notes during the message later on. Uh, maybe it looks like actually standing up in your house <laughs> when no one else knows, it might not be the cool, really thing that you'd see on Instagram, like go for a run and don't forget to stretch, but it could be that thing that helps you make the most out of this time in this Sunday broadcast. So I really want to encourage you with that thought. It was a long-winded one, I know. Um, but yeah, we've got so much great stuff coming up and if you're new, make sure that you um, let us know. We want to celebrate the fact that you're here and get some information to you. But for everyone right now, I want you to keep your eyes locked as we listen to a message from one of our lead team members as they encourage us at this time. We have a, a culture at TCC of the church caring for the church. And you know, during a, a global pandemic, there's nothing like a pandemic for this length of time to show whether we really have a culture or not. And I, I thank God that over these months we have seen the church caring for the church. It is a culture. And let me just give a, a little bit of a, advice in, in relation to that. You know, we, we advise one another in, in this time. We care for one another. And I, I just want to encourage you to do that from uh, a place of health. You know... Currently, we may be in a, in a situation that's hurtful. We may be going through some difficult times. And I think it's so important that when we are encouraging one another, that we don't place our hurt uh, or the context or the things that we're going through on other people. I think it's great that we empathize with one another. But I think when it comes to advice, he, here's the deal, right? Let's, let's give advice based on what would Jesus do in this situation? The last thing I want to do is to place my emotions or my emotional state that may not be in a great place 
onto someone else. I don't want to advise them based on my current emotions. I want to advise and care for someone based on this is by the book and this is what Jesus would do. So be encouraged in that. Let's say thanks to our senior leader, Dave. That was a great, great encouragement, and I hope it's something that you take to heart. We're going to carry on um, in the next few weeks talking about this message of spread hope. And I really encourage you, if you've missed any of the past few gatherings, you can check them out on YouTube or listen to messages on uh, the website or wherever you get your podcasts. Just search TCC Life. We're going to carry on in this journey, learning as a church community about how we're spreading hope. Um, I want to read to you a story from someone who sent something in. And they just said, I don't have any specific stories to mention, but I just want to say, I think we all feel privileged and blessed to be in this group. We meet weekly on Zoom, and we also have WhatsApp groups as well. All our ladies have supported each other, prayed for each other, and encouraged each other, whatever our circumstances. When one of us has a need, whatever it might be, it's so wonderful to know that we can turn to each other and ask for prayer and support. It's equally comforting knowing that where we are is a group of ladies like these who genuinely are praying for each other. Whatever we're going through, whatever we're facing, that we have that. I think that's a really encouraging thing that someone sent in. And I think that wherever you find yourself today, we're here for you as a church community, and we want to get to know you better. So make sure that you're getting engaged in the chat. And over the next few weeks, we'll come into a very, very important and special time in our church community. I know a lot of us are looking forward to it, and I don't want you to be lost or confused, so I want to give you the heads up. So, next week, you're going to find out a lot more about First Fruits. It's a really key time in our church community that I think that you'll want to know more about, so make sure that you're staying along, following on socials, and staying on the Sunday broadcast to find out more about this event that's coming up that means a lot to this church community. Anyway, I'm gonna hand over to a video now, so uh, keep your eyes on the screen. It is great to see you again this week and we're continuing with our theme of powerful promises. How cool is that? Do you all remember the memory verse from last week? Let me hear it, shout it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that's found in Hebrews 13, 8. So we get to do a little bit of an action about the promise of God for this week. And the promise is that God will help me. You reckon you can do that? Are you ready for it? All right, everybody stand up, parents, everybody up on your feet. Here we go for the promise. Are we ready? God will help me. And to explore this a little bit further, we're gonna do a little bit of an experiment. Right, so I've got my equipment, okay? What I wanna say is that when we invited Jesus into our hearts and into our lives, what we did, we said yes to God helping us out. How cool is that? So God has given each of us his Holy Spirit who comes and lives inside of us. Sometimes we might not even and even know that the Holy Spirit is living inside of us, but he is, and he is always there to help. So this experiment is gonna help us, is that okay? So this balloon here, this represents you and me before we said yes to Jesus, okay? And this down here, this little candle here, these are some of the problems that we might face. Let's have a look and see what happens. How 
Whoa! Oh, that's... Whoa! And that is just like... Sometimes when we face problems, things just go boom, bang, they spiral out of control, all right? But let's look at that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, just like this balloon here. It's got some water in it representing the Holy Spirit, all right? And when we've got the Holy Spirit in us, things happen very differently. Let me get another lit can. Are you ready for this? Have a look to this. No matter how close we get, we can even put the balloon right in that problem. Look at that! Wow! Now that is Holy Spirit protection. How awesome is that? When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we can have a very different outcome. We can learn to have a different response in very hard and difficult situations. That's how cool God is. He sends his helper to live within us and to guide us through some of the most difficult times of our lives. You know, you have the Holy Spirit inside you and he never leaves. Even though you may feel like it at times, he is still with you. And you can count on how awesome is that so kids remember dive into your activity packs this week and keep in touch parents we love seeing the, the pictures of your kids enjoying their activities so please get in touch post it on our Facebook site at Kids Church TCC and what's our promise this week it is God will help that's right. So grab your activity, have fun, stay safe, and remember, God will help me. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us here today. If you are new, let us know so we can welcome you personally. It's no accident you're here. God has a huge plan for your future. If you're new here, we can send you a digital welcome pack to let you know more about our community and to get involved. Don't forget to say hi in the chat feed to let us know that you're here today. So come on everybody, let's welcome our guests. There's so much more to our community than just this broadcast. You can follow us on our social medias to find out the latest information and hear more about Live Free, Kids Church and community groups. Why don't you connect with us by liking, sharing and subscribing. You are free to give today. You can bring your tithe or give a generous offering. You can do this for your mobile banking app or in an online giving form. Use the details on the screen. Why not make your giving easier by setting up a standing order? If you're a UK taxpayer, don't forget to gift aid. Whichever way you choose to give today, thank you. For those who refresh others are themselves refreshed. We're here today to create an irresistible environment where people can find the way back to God. So thank you for listening and let's carry on with the broadcast. Good morning. It is so great to be with you today on our online broadcast. And I'm Rachel. I'm going to be continuing talking about spreading hope. Um, now, when I use the word hope, if you've been around for our few broadcasts that we've had in the last few weeks, I'm referring to something that Johnny, who was leading worship at the beginning, said, our living hope. Jesus Christ. And so I don't know where you're at at the minute in your faith, whether you're a person of faith, whether you're watching this on YouTube and you're just exploring or maybe you're on Facebook. I don't know where you're at, but you know, I believe that every single person needs hope. And not just a wishful thought or a positive thought or a hope even that things will get better, but a hope in the form of the person of Jesus Christ. Do you know, um, we all have needs, right? Everybody has need. We often talk about people who are in need. And usually what we mean is not ourselves. We mean people who need food or who need shelter, who need water. And you know, whoever you are watching this or a part of this today, the fact is you have needs for different things. You may have some things in your life right now that you, in the future, you will need because you won't have anymore. 
You may have a need now that will be met, and in the future it won't be a need anymore. And so we have varying needs. Some people need emotional support. Some people need food. Some people need true friendship. Some need a job. You know, so the things that you need are not necessarily the same as every, everybody else. But, you know, everybody needs hope. Everyone. You know, the thing that unites us or one of the things that unites us in our humanity is that we always need hope. And here's the thing. When I speak about hope, I said I'm speaking about a living hope, the person of Jesus Christ, knowing him knowing his freedom, knowing his truth, living into that eternal hope that even when we die, that we won't just disintegrate and rot away and it was for nothing, but that we'll be with Christ, that we'll be fully restored and everything that has been broken will be mended. That's what I mean. But you know, in humanity, it's easy to think that certain people don't need hope because of how we measure things. So we might think, well, somebody whose life is going well, who has healthy relationships, who's crushing it in terms of their career, or whose children are well-behaved and they're doing all the right things, and they're earning a great wage, and, and basically life is great. We think, actually, those people don't really need hope. You know, the truth is that every day of our lives, we need hope. Whether you are at the worst point of your life that you can imagine, which you may be today, or whether you are just on the mountaintop of life, you don't need hope. You will not need hope any more tomorrow than you did yesterday. It's the same all the time. And so I can think back to some really challenging times of my life, and I think, yeah, do you know what? Wow, I needed so much hope then. But you know, the truth is today, I need that same hope just as much as I did on my worst day. So you know, on your best days and on your worst days, Jesus Christ, our living hope, we need. And it's important, I wanted to share this with you this morning. It's important that we remember that because sometimes this clouds how we spread hope. Because we look at some people and think, you know what, they're actually they don't really need much hope, like they're doing okay, their life is great. You know, the truth is, and I believe as a person of faith, and I know I speak on behalf of our church community, is if you do not have Jesus, you do not know the hope that we have. And everything could be perfect in your life. You could think that everything is going from the world's perspective on an upwards trajectory. You could be living your best life. You could be living your every dream. But without that hope, there is always something missing. You know, it's obvious to say somebody who is in need and in need of basic things like food, shelter, water, friendship, love, basic things that we all need It's easy to look at people like that and say, wow, they just need hope, which is true. But you know, we need hope. And I think part of our challenge for for those of us who are people of faith is we forget that we need hope. So when we come to faith in Jesus, we usually it's a point where we realize, wow, I've been so broken. I've either been so hurt or my life has just been without Jesus. And at that point, we realize I'm broken. Jesus, I need you. Not only do I want you, but I need you. You know, part of the challenge for, pe- for us church and people of faith is that as life maybe gets a little bit better or as things are going our way, we forget we need Jesus. We forget. Even in our humanity, even in our brokenness, even in the things that we find difficult, it's easy to forget we need Jesus. Not just that we want him, but we need him. And even back in some of our worst days, we can see it was obvious to see we needed him, but still now and today we need him. And I want you to get this because when we forget this, it's easy to be distracted by everything else in the world. It's easy to be distracted by things going horribly wrong or things going fantastically well and going exactly how we planned them. But you know, there is almost, for me, not as good of a moment in our lives and the time that we need to come back to over and over again than when we surrender to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you. Not only do I want you and I want to live for you and I want to know your freedom, but I need you to live the life you've called me to live. I need you to be the person and to be whole and to recognize who I am. I need you. And so I just wanted to start by saying and being absolutely clear, we all need hope. Every season, 
every day we need Jesus and not just hope, a wishful thought, the person of Jesus Christ. We need to know his freedom, his salvation and his goodness. And sometimes the way we measure life as being successful, somebody getting the things they want or having great relationships or achieving things they set out to achieve, when we use that measuring stick, it's easy to think some people, they just don't need hope as much as others. You know, the truth is right here, right now, today, I need as much hope as I needed before I knew Jesus for myself. And I will do in 10 years time, 20 years time, 30 years time. We need Jesus. One thing I just wanted to touch on while we've got this time together in our our gathering this morning, our broadcast, is, is simply this, faded hope. What happens when you have faded hope? Is that even a thing? Well, I think it is. You know, um, especially if you're a person who is in a relationship with Jesus, you would call yourself a person of faith or a Christian. It is easy through your life and through different things for hope just to become faded, for it just to become dulled down a little bit. Now, is it that Jesus has changed at all? No. Actually, the Word of God says that God and, and therefore Jesus and the Holy Spirit was the same yesterday, today, and He will be the same forever. And so it's not that Jesus fades or his hope, he somehow changes, but sometimes we can just feel like we carry a faded hope. I certainly have felt like this, and even more so recently I felt like, wow, the life can just get on top of you. And it almost just kind of clouds the freedom and the hope that we have, and therefore inhibits even our ability to spread hope. Because hope is so faded within us, we kind of just, we get sidetracked, we lose the plot, we kind of lose our focus on the most important things. And so I'm going to read to you a scripture from 1 Corinthians in the New Testament, it's chapter 13, and I'm going to read from a version called the Amplified Version. Now, all that means is it just has extra words in it. I'm a word person. I like this because it just gives more description of the text, and the author of this, Paul, says this. In 1 Corinthians, it's verse, chapter 13, verses 12 to 13. For now, in this time of imperfection, we see in a mirror dimly a blurred reflection, like a riddle or an enigma. But then when the time of perfection comes, we will see reality face to face. I'm just going to stop there for a minute. What the author's saying there is that our life at the minute, we don't know everything. We're only human. We're only finite. We can't see everything. We can't know the answer to, to everything as much as we long to sometimes, especially when we've walked difficult roads and we want to understand the why behind it, that actually in our present state, we can't and we don't understand everything. Moving on, he says this, now I know in part, just in fragments, but then I will know fully, just as I have been fully known by God. And then, and then he goes on to say, now there are three things that remain. Faith, abiding, trust in God and his promises. Hope, and he, and he describes hope like this. Confident expectation of eternal salvation. Love, which is unselfish love for others, growing out of God's love for me. These three are the choicest graces, but the greatest of these is love. Now, out of all the scriptures I could have read to you um, from the Bible about hope, I chose this one, and here's why. I love how Paul talks about the difficulty, the parts that we know now. I, I can think of so many times, even in the past 12 months, where as a person of faith, I've gone before God and been upset about the parts I can't see. I'm kind of like, God, but you've promised me this, and I can't see this. Oh, God, this happened, and I just don't understand why. It doesn't compute with me. It doesn't seem to line up with who you are. It doesn't seem to line up with your goodness. And you know, we can become broken and have faded hope because we become so fo focused on the parts we can't see. But you know, the text is so clear that actually we don't see now, we only see in part. You know, when we move on from this life, and if you're a person of faith, when we faith, when we meet face to face with Jesus, it's basically saying that we'll know fully, we'll understand everything. But right now on earth, we don't understand. And you know, when we get so hooked up on the parts we don't know, we can have faded hope. Our hope begins to fade. 
The best way I can describe this to you is right at the start of lockdown in March last year, you probably remember if you're in the UK, people started to paint rainbows everywhere. And loads of kids were doing paintings of rainbows and sticking them up in the window, staying safe, safe. And it was a way of like encouraging the NHS and encouraging one another. And I've got to be completely real with you. I am not the kind of parent who sticks things in my window because it throws off the aesthetics of my house. I know that's savage, but I'm not usually. But actually, someone painted, it was one of my little girl's aunties, painted a really nice rainbow. And I was like, that's going to go in the window. Come on, we need to like join together with everybody else. And so there'll be a picture coming up on the screen now, and you'll see it. And it is a picture of the rainbow that is in my window, or it was in my window. And that was taken right at the end of March 2020, OK? It's beautiful, it's colorful, it's vibrant. Now, I, you know when something's in your house and you're like, oh, that's been there so long, I don't even notice that it's there anymore? In December, when I was taking down the Christmas decorations, actually, that's a lie, it was the beginning of January. We were taking down the Christmas decorations, and I'm like, oh, I've not taken that rainbow down, and I'd completely forgotten it was there. I decided to pull it off, took it off, and I took a picture of it because it was so different to the original picture that had been made. I'm like, I'm going to share this with you today. So you should see now on your screen a faded rainbow. You can see it. It's completely different to the original picture. And you know, I think this is what happens when we have faded hope. That window, that picture has been stuck up in the window. And for almost a year, it's been exposed to the elements. It's been exposed to sunlight, everything that could possibly happen, it has seen. It's looked out and seen all of those things. And then when I've picked it up, it's no longer a vibrant rainbow, but it's just a muted, kind of pastely, subdued version of what it was before. Now, the key thing is that you can still see it's the same picture. You can still see it's the same rainbow. It's not gone anywhere. It's not disappeared. And you know, when you have faded hope, it's easy to think, God, where are you? Where are you in all of this? You know, he's still there. Remember, Jesus is our living hope. Actually, by his Holy Spirit, he's ever present. But just within us, the colors can become faded. The vibrancy, the boldness just gets dulled down when we're exposed to the elements of life, disappointments, frustrations, letdowns, betrayals, sometimes just the daily grind. It can just wear us down. And as people of faith, the, the key thing to always remember is Jesus has not gone anywhere. He's still here. He's still active. He's still living. He still cares about you. He still loves you. But sometimes we've got to take some steps towards him and say, do you know what, God? I've got a faded hope. I know you're still there. Jesus, I know you're still living. But right now, I can't, I'm struggling to even spread hope because I just feel so faded in the midst of this. And so we can't just passively wait for something to happen and something to change. And I just wanted to give to you really quickly three things. If you have faded hope, and when you have faded hope, three really simple, practical things we can do. And the first one is this. So pertinent, I believe, in the times we're living in is simply recognize the times. You know, if you are feeling faded, if you're feeling even weak or just kind of muted, the color's been taken out of you, the passion maybe has been taken out of you, just remember the times. You know, certainly in the UK at the minute, we are in lockdown again, okay? And this, this was maybe a little bit fun the first time it happened, but nearly a year on, you know, the joke's not funny anymore and things are difficult and society is in a difficult place not only because of a pandemic, but because of what happens on the back of that and all the kind of things that pour out of it. And so the first thing you can do is just be a bit kinder to yourself. Recognize the times. If you're feeling a bit under pressure, a bit downtrodden, just recognize that probably other people do as well. Other people maybe are feeling that pressure, that frustration, that disappointment, letdowns, maybe things that they'd hoped they'd do in the past year they've not been able to do. Sometimes that's more than just going on a holiday. Sometimes that's taking big steps forward. That's being able to see grandchildren, children. It can be really disappointing. And so sometimes we've just got to be kinder to ourselves and recognize the time we're in. Even that can dull us down or even fade our hope a little bit. 
Second thing is this, so importantly, if you're experiencing faded hope, go to God firsthand. Why do I say that? Well, do you know, I love the digital age we live in. In fact, without that, I wouldn't be speaking to you through this screen today. I love so many things about our digital age and just the amazing technology we have access to and can use and what it means for our lives. One thing I would say is a negative of it is that very often people of faith get so caught up listening to podcasts, watching videos online of like world-class communicators, reading online devotionals, that they've forgotten how to go firsthand to God. For, sometimes we forget how to go to God and be like, God, it's just me. Today, I'm not just going to listen to somebody else's revelation of you. I'm just going to come and listen to you as Rachel. <laughs> I'm going to write something that I wrote from my experience and my life with, instead of just reading somebody else's thoughts. You know, there's nothing wrong with those things. They are amazing enhancements and gifts to us. But you know, when we live our lives just looking for something, looking for someone else to teach us all the time, looking to hear somebody else pray, we miss the joy and the beauty of why Jesus even died was so that we could come to the knowledge of the Father, to know him, to live with him, to be set free, and to walk with him daily. Go to God firsthand. You know, there's nothing like when you have faded hope to return back to the source of hope, to return back to your living hope. We try everything else before we try this. We try self-care. We try an early night. We try even repairing our friendships. You know, sometimes we've just got to go back to the source of our hope. No messing. Not even an online broadcast. Not a podcast. We just come back to who God says he is and we just spend time with him. We make space to hear him, to talk to him, to tell him our disappointments, our fears, our joys, all of those things. Third thing, really practically, and it's similar to what I've just said, but it's this. Focus on the things that don't change. Do you know there's so many things at the minute, especially that are changing all the time. Things changed all the time anyway. At the minute, things change so often. And so we can become a little bit lethargic, a little bit disappointed with things changing all the time. So we don't get our hopes up for anything because we're just like, I'm not sure this is even going to happen. If I plan to go on holiday in December this year, is it going to happen? Who knows? Nobody's doing it. But you know, sometimes we get so obsessed with the trappings of our work or even our family, good things that we've been given that are a gift, that we forget to focus in on the things that don't change. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says the three things that remain are faith, hope, and love. And so kind of my parting question to you before I pray in a minute would be, how much time are you spending focusing on those things? Does that mean you have to sit and meditate on them every day? No. But you may need to make space in your life to clear a bit of space up where God can speak to you, where you can come back to the most important things. And the most important thing, God himself. I'm just conscious, even as we come to the end of this broadcast, not everybody hearing this has this living hope. You may have listened to me today and thought, well, yeah, Rich, that's good, but I don't even know this Jesus you speak of. Yeah, I knew he was a man. I knew he was born in a manger. Beyond that, I, c I don't get it. I don't see his relevance to my life. I don't really understand faith. You know, here's the thing. There are so many mysteries and complexities about God himself, but one thing is absolutely clear. He loves you, he is for you, he created you, and he, he even calls you his child. And he says that knowing who you are, knowing what you've done, knowing your brokenness, knowing whether you're having the greatest time of your life, the worst time of your life, or somewhere in between, he still says those things to you. And just at the close of this broadcast, I wanna give you an opportunity, if you've never responded to this God, responded to his love. Let me tell you what he does when you come towards him. Scripture says in a, in a book in a book called James in the New Testament, if you'll draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. And so all we're going to do is just take one step towards him and pray a prayer that is basically saying, God, I'm sorry for where I've gone wrong. And I want to know your healing, your fullness and your goodness. And I want to submit to who you are. And I believe that in doing that, I'll 
have fullness of life and not just life on earth, but eternal life. And so that's, if that's you and you're at home and you're on the broadcast, pray this prayer with me now. We're going to pray it together. Dear Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for forgiving me. I'm sorry. I'm yours now and I'm free now. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, maybe for the first time, maybe you've prayed it before, but you've been what you would maybe describe as far away or far removed from God. I just want to say, what an incredible prayer to pray. What an amazing decision. And I know there's an option there if you're online. There's a hand. You can put a hand in the chat feed and you can say that you've responded. All that will do is give our team an opportunity if you want prayer to pray for you. But I just want to say on behalf of me and the team that are here at The Edge, well done. What an amazing decision. We're going to carry on with the broadcast. We're going to sing together um, and we're going to have some time to worship. Um, please let us know if you've made that response today. And at the end, Kofi will tell you how you can do that and what that means moving forwards. Yes, I know how this story 
the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good Joseph. I just wanted to share this scripture with you this morning. Um, after everything, after going through the, the his absolute lowest point, Joseph meets his brothers again. And he's in a position of power. You know, God has blessed him. He's, he's taken through that trial. So he can look over it all. And he says to his brothers, you intended to harm me. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives. And imagine if we could put ourselves at the end of this and, and worship now as if we were looking back, singing to him and thanking him for the fact that he took this hardship that we might be in the midst of and he turned it for good to have that hope as Rach said that expectation of salvation Lord we expect we expect your unfailing love in this time we're expecting you to turn what the enemy meant for evil into something good that saves lives. I thank you, Lord, for the many, 
the countless lives that have been dedicated to you in the last 12 months. In the darkest places, your light shines the brightest. So just meet us again, Father. It is all you. And as we're walking through that trial, I pray that you'll, you'll meet us to walk through it.
That's the end of this week's gathering. I want to encourage you, if you feel like you responded to what Rach was saying in whatever way that may be, especially if it's that you want to get to know this living hope that we have, that we call Jesus, hit the button if you're on church online. There's a button there that will um, say that you can respond and ask for prayer on the back of that. And if you're on Facebook, just drop a hand emoji in the chat feed and someone will be able to talk to you. You can direct message the page um, and have a conversation with someone there. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. I want to pray over us as we go out. I want to really encourage us. Think about that question that Rach left us with. How much are we focusing on those three things of faith, hope, and love? Father, thank you for today. Thank you for what you're doing at this time in this church community. We pray, Father, that you will carry on doing this work that you're doing within us to inspire us to move past the faded hope and hold on to the hope that we have. And I pray, Father, that we are encouraged and emboldened to go out into the world and spread the hope that you've given us. I pray, Father, for protection over everyone this coming week and that Lord you'll just be uh, ever present and that you will be ever at work within the lives of those watching this broadcast and those around them amen amen I encourage you follow us on social media today's community church on Facebook at TCC Life on Instagram. There's going to be posts throughout the week to encourage you and to point you in the direction of some more information. So make sure that you're staying plugged in and connected. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us.